Hello, lovely people. Welcome to the Geekhood. I am Penj, and we are back with some more 60 parsecs because our last attempt did not go entirely according to plan. Everyone else seemed to be okay. Well, actually, no. Dee Dee wasn't that fine when we tried because she'd got a bit of a soup can sticking out of her head because I threw it at her. But our main guy, Emmett, the person who we were playing as, ended up dying of a variety, a multitude of space diseases, and essentially it just uh, rotted him down to a skeleton and he died. And therefore our game ended. But that wasn't good enough. So I'm going to give this another go. Let's begin another new adventure, a Voyager level thing. And we're going to pick a new captain. Now we've tried Emmett. I don't think we should be Emmett again. Who has got the next most feasible goal? Uh, DD has to make seven successful attribute decisions of any type. Um, Baby Bronco is friends with at least three. That's quite hard. Megan is keep everyone alive for 30 days. That's quite hard. Tom, send five successful expeditions on a strange new world. Now, to, in order to do that, we have to get to the strange new world in the first place, which we didn't do last time. We were nearly there. We were nearly there. And in fact, Tom and Dee might have actually gone on to that strange new world, but we certainly didn't as Emmett because Emmett was a bit skeleton-y. So um, I think we picked Tom. Also, I just like the fact that he looks so utterly cheesy. I actually want to read the... Um, I want to read the uh, thing here, the description. Everyone's first impression of Tom Thompson is that of a decorated major, brave and courageous, a man who has seen it all, sporting a dastardly eye patch. Oh, yes, it's very dastardly indeed. And a coat of once magnificent blonde hair. Tom believes to be everyone's dream hero come true and the personification of the American hero, except none of this is true. Oh, how intriguing, how intriguing. He's just a cheesy con man then, is he? He's a cheesy con man with, you know, the wit and the charm and the patter and the pointy fingers to go with it. But yeah, let's be him. Let's be Tom Thompson. Let's blast off and start another 60 parsecs adventure, which will hopefully go better than our previous one. Okay, so as before, we've got ourselves a little bit of time before all this kicks off to have a little explore around and see what's where. Okay, this room does not have a lot of stuff in. I'm going to try and grab everything that's in this room. I'm going to try and grab all the things that are in here. We never need to come back here ever again. So some soup down here, I think. Can I pick up the soup? Oh, no. I've got the atomic battery. Rob, there's nothing else particularly in that room that we need. There's a tin of soup up there I'm not so fussed about. Right, pick up whatever that thing is. It's a sock puppet. Okay, we'll pick up a person and we'll pick up a tin of soup. Go on, pick it up. Right, good. That's good. Some things we do want. We either want a med kit... We want a handbook. Oh, beautiful. Yes, give me the med kit, please. There we go. Now, I am acutely aware we need some more food as well. We also could do with another person. Just one more. Um, oh, there's the handbook. That's good. Right, there's loads of resources and stuff in there. We're going to go back into that room and grab some more food. Because that's useful. Time is ticking away. Ah, oh, dearie me. It's very, you, you think, oh, I've got a minute. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's not very long. <laughs> it's not very long at all. Right. Get into the thing. Get into the thing. Right, we need to go back into there. Throw that in. We have got a med kit. Have we got time to grab another person? Uh, Megan. Oh, no. We're not going to make it to the thing. We're not going to make it to the thing. Get in, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. Jump in. Oh, <laughs> we only just made it. Only just made it. Now, I don't know if we've got a massive load of resources. I'm not entirely sure. We've certainly picked up some boxes of stuff, some crafting resources. Other than that, I don't think we've got that much stuff. We didn't get a gun. We didn't get a shovel. Uh, what else did we get? Let's have a look. When it comes back up, let's have a nosy at what we ended up with. Okay, day one in space. So we've got ourselves this book. We've got ourselves the handbook, which is useful. We've got ourselves the atomic battery. Uh, we've got ourselves quite a lot of soup. We've got a sock puppet friend up there, so we don't have to craft one of those because they're a craftable thing. So we don't have to craft a sock puppet. I like the way it's in a special emergency case. That's very good. But we did get the first aid kit which is very useful. And that last time would have saved us. But never mind. So now this is a whole new game, a whole new world. And we've got ourselves Tom, who's a daydreamer, Megan, and Dee Dee. Uh, so what does daydreamer do? Does that keep his sanity up, possibly? Because he's daydreaming about other things? I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit worried that we haven't got really got much other stuff. Other than, other than a sock puppet, a book, and a battery. That's all we've got. Um, okay, so we need to check the star log. Yep, all this kind of stuff. Ah, the shuttle came pre-stocked with an emergency food supply. Use it well. Another tin of soup. Okie dokie. Right, and now we have to do this. Uh, Captain, all Astro Citizen missions begin with the commanding officer delivering a morale-boosting speech. Okay, we did this last time, so we're not going to pick an agility speech, because that's kind of silly. A little bit of intelligence or strength. Well, we did intelligence last time. Let's go down a strength route. Yes, confirm that decision, and that is all we can do on day one. 
We don't need to give people food. No one's gone insane. There's nothing to craft. So let's just shift on quickly to day two and see what happens. Okay. Uh, a strong captain is what this crew needs. Too bad your display of power is limited to shouting things like, this is a stick-up and salty cheesecake. I can precisely imagine him shouting salty cheesecake. He looks like that kind of guy. If your intention was to distress or absolutely horrify your crew, then you've made it, Captain. They are visibly upset. I think I registered someone talking about jumping out of the airlock. Oh, that'd be her. That'd be Dee Dee. Captain. Uh, the crafting module in the back of the cabin has been activated. Okie doke. So as we saw before, the crafting module at the back is now switched on. Right. Is everyone slightly demoralised now? Oh no, morale's okay. Oh, okay. I just didn't inspire them onto greater things, but at least they're not sort of uh, depressed and suicidal either. Uh, we can't craft anything. We could recycle something or we could upgrade something. What can we upgrade? The atomic battery or the book. It might be worth upgrading that book because that came in really useful before. So yeah, let's upgrade the book. Why the heck not? And decision time. Captain, I'm detecting a troubling build-up of mental tension. Recommended course of action, throw an epic party. I took the liberty of inviting myself. Invite the entire crew, but of course, the more the merrier, I guess. How about we invite someone new, eh, Captain? Someone you don't know. Or we make ourselves a new companion. Yes, how do we do it? So, the choices are... Oh, and he's already become immediately useful. We use our sock puppet friend as a new person to invite to the party. Or one of us puts on a mask, which we don't unfortunately have. Or we do nothing. Okay. I'm thinking we might want to keep the sock puppet for later on. I imagine if we do this now, it'll just go, the party was rubbish, Captain. I don't think anyone's going to suffer from it. I'd rather keep the sock puppet for later on, just in case anybody does go a bit bonkers. So, um, okay, so we're upgrading the book which is fine. Nobody's hungry, which is lovely. So the book's been upgraded. We're not taking action. Nobody needs food or healing. Yep. End day. Let's go on to day three. Now, what did we get to last time? 13? I think we might have got to day 13. Hey there, Captain Buzzkill. Feeling better? I bet you'd be much better off after a night of partying with your friend Astro. Your loss. <laughs> but nothing happened. There were no bad things and we still have our sock puppet friends. That's good. And we've got a handbook, revised edition, Cosmos 102. Okay, that's intriguing. Uh, so we could upgrade the atomic battery for our remaining 10 power points or just leave it alone. I don't know what the atomic battery does. I'm not entirely sure what it does, but we can't craft anything. We can recycle a few things. I don't really want to recycle anything, though, particularly. We'll leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. Okay, uh, nothing else much going on. Let's make a decision. Captain, are you all right? Those weird spots in your arm. Oh no, I've already got the pox. I've already got space pox. Can you see them? Please wait while I search the medical database. Searching. Blip, blip, blip. Unfortunately, I am unable to identify your affliction. I'm afraid you will have to diagnose it yourself. That shouldn't be too hard. Doctors are overrated. Can you do that, Captain? And our book is going to be immediately useful. And it's upgraded as well. It's got more pages of information in. So that's particularly fantastic. Well done. That's very good. Why is that on the wall behind her? There's something on the wall. Is that a picture of Earth? Have we drawn a picture of Earth on there? Oh, that's quite nice. I like that. Um, again, nobody's hungry. Flicked to the end of the day. Let's hope that this book has got some sort of cure for me in it, or at least some sort of help to stop me becoming ill. Yay, there you go. Weird spots appeared on your body yesterday. Luckily, you found a solution in the handbook. The spots were the first symptoms of a potentially dangerous and highly shameful ailment. At least it was easy to cure. All you need to do was to follow the step-by-step -step instructions in the handbook. Oh, if Emmett last time I had had that, he would have been fine. I wouldn't have died a horrible skeleton -y death. Okay. Uh, now, this is interesting, look, because I thought that this thing generated... Um, this thing generated... Uh, resources for us to craft, but nothing seems to be being generated now. I swear the last time out, we were actually producing extra things. We were making extra things. We were making two of these a day or whatever. Or did, was I just making that up? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's the crew you have, or maybe we picked up a certain item that was making that work better. I don't know. Okay. Is anyone hungry? Anyone hungry? Are you hungry particularly? No, your hunger is okay still on day four. You've not eaten for that long. Okay, that's good news. Sure, you could peruse Astro Citizen promotional materials when bored, but no. No, don't put that on. Captain, you've just initiated the Weight Observer 1000 on your wrist. It's just a marketing gadget, cracked and effective. When you look at yourself now, you see a bulky bulldog. It's supposed to motivate you to lose weight. Stop scratching your ear, or at least take your shoe off first and do something about this. The ship needs a captain. Oh, no. So now, 
I could either use my duct tape, which I haven't got. I could use a gun. What do you use a gun for? Which I haven't got. Or I can use our sock puppet friend up there in the glass emergency case with the little glass uh, hammer thing to smash the glass. Let's go for that then, because I think something's going, something terrible will happen otherwise. Now, I don't know how much a sock puppet is going to help. I really don't know. But yeah, let's use you anyway. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, can we craft anything? No, we can't craft anything at all. Uh, okay, right, fine. Let's skip to the next day. Let's see if my sock puppet friend has helped me in any way, shape or form. Do anything to do with whatever it was I put on my wrist, the weight gain 5,000 or whatever it was. Uh, okay, I've got a bit of got a bit of stubble going on, but I don't seem to be any worse off. The weight of Zover 1000 made you see yourself as a bulky bulldog in order to frighten you into a diet, but you embraced it, taking full advantage of becoming a dog, marking your territory proudly, attacking a sock and destroying it with glee. Okay, so I've attacked the sock puppet. I've ripped the sock puppet apart. So our sock puppet friend is no more. He is shredded somewhere. The weight observer's battery gave out fast. He spit out the sock and stood up, but found no joy in your regained humanity. If it makes you feel any better, you still bark in your sleep. Okay, <laughs> right you are. Now everyone's hungry. That is absolutely fine. I was sort of expecting that to be at this point. Captain, I've got good news. Oh dear. Oh dear, we are all going to get poorly, I imagine. I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was a success. It's now packed full and ready to be emptied into space. The bad news is that the airlock hatch is jammed. If you don't fix it soon, our clock toilet will eventually become an extinction level event. Now or never, Captain. How will you save the human race? I'm not going to because I can't because I don't have a roll of duct tape. That is it. I cannot do anything else. Unless I can somehow... What do I need to craft tape? Ten mineral things. Oh, hang on. Can I undo my decisions? Can I change my decisions? Hang on. Can I alter them? Can I flick them? Cancel. Uh, my choice. Uh, confirm decision. Ah, now I wonder if I can... Right, hang on. Hang on. I might be able to stop us drowning in our own poop. Uh, if I recycle a tin of soup to give us ten of those... Oh, no, but it's not going to do it now, is it? It's going to do it later on. So if I set that to recycle, yeah, that's going to do that oh, for next time out, which is no good. That's no good at all. Oh, that's just really irritating. Do you know what? We'll do that anyway. We'll get ourselves a roll of duct tape. It might be useful for something else. But right now, we cannot do anything. We are we are powerless. We have no duct tape. So, um, yeah, okay. Let's see what happens to the ocean of poo. Oh, I forgot to feed people. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. We'll do it next time out. That's fine. We've eked it out another day, but we do need to give some people some food now. Um, doing nothing about the airlock toilet <laughs> was risky, Captain. Luckily for you, the door unjammed on its own eventually, probably because the odour buildup made it corrosive. Too bad about all the health hazards, of course, but then again, it's a 100% human problem, which makes it 100% yours and exactly 0% mine. And we've recycled some soup, which is good. So now we can craft ourselves some tape, because that's going to be useful at some point, isn't it? That, oh, or we could craft ourselves a communicator. The communicator could also be useful if we need to speak to alien life or whatever. Uh, a lighter, probably not quite as useful. Yeah. Duct tape or a communicator? I'm going to go for a communicator. I'm going to completely change what I was thinking originally and go down the route of a communicator. Because if we get, like, you know, if we need to land on a planet, that might really help. So let's get a communicator on the go. Let's do our decision. Again, we're just going to have to pick this. Attention, Captain. I'm detecting a leak in our reactor coolant system. In case you're wondering, this is not good. Did I mention you should not inhale anything that comes out of the reactor? Please don't. Also, how are you going to fix it? I'm not, because I can't. Right. Let's go to the end of the day and see how badly everyone's going to die. We will give everybody some food, however, because I'm nice like that. I think we've got plenty. I think we've got, what, eight up there? So that's okay. So everyone's had some food at least. Day seven rumbles on. Oh no, he, everyone's going a bit weak. He also, he's, he's changed his pose. He's not as bold and noble and heroic as he once was. Okay, teamwork goes so much better when a group of humans is faced with the possibility of a radioactive death. With all the chaos and cries for help, I can't even tell which one of you managed to fix the leak in the end. Too bad you inhaled quite a bit of coolant in the process. Oh dear. So everybody is weak. Everybody is now weak. That's probably not good. Is everyone hungry? Oh, everyone's hungry as well. Even though I've just given you some food, everyone is still hungry. Oh, botherations. Okay, well, what's on the um, 
What's on the computer? Captain, something's not right. There's an uncontrolled power surge in the crafting module. I cannot do anything to stop it. This is no accident. It's sabotage. Someone needs to fix it immediately or it's going to blow. Hurry. Oh dear. Uh, okay, who was the most intelligent? Can we see their stats again now? Can we see the stats? I don't think we can. Am I supposed to try and remember what their stats were? I genuinely can't remember what they were. Um... Okay, let's ration soup to all. Let's do that, because that's the thing. Because we're all hungry. I'd rather them, you know, survive a little bit now. And do we want to give you your week? I don't know if we want to give you a med kit. Maybe just a healthy tin of tomato soup will keep you alive for a bit. That's what I'm hoping. Um, who can we have to fix the thing? Who can we have to do that? Because it's broken. Because that's, I mean, that's fine, whatever. Um, do we go down the route of Tom... Or was she intelligent? Megan, I think, was intelligent. Megan. Let's have her. Let's have her do it. Absolutely. She looks kind of... Uh, she looks serious enough to do that kind of thing. So, yes. Okay. Everyone's having more food to make sure they stay alive. Let's end the day. Please stay alive. Please stay alive. Please say you're not hungry because you've had food two days in a row. So, you know, you've eaten quite well. Given that it's soup every time. But, yeah. Good. People are no longer hungry. That is fine. Megan to the rescue. Her swift action saved the day and the sabotage crafting system. Who could have thought all it took was unplugging the power cable? <laughs> the crafting module needs to restart, but it should be up and running tomorrow. Oh, well, that's a bit annoying because I wanted some food. Uh, Dee Dee is in poor health. Megan is in poor health. You are no longer hungry. Dee Dee's no longer hungry. Dee Dee is alert. Megan is no longer hungry. Megan is doing well mentally. She looks alert. So she's weak. Everyone's weak. Because I've all had a nice dose of radioactive poisoning. But at least everybody is still alive. There's something weird on the computer screen just there. Your attention is required, Captain. Ah, it's the signals thing. It's the signals thing which hopefully will put us on course to land on a planet. Um, okay, so yes, there are signals. We need to decipher them. Uh, for all we know, our survival depends on it. Megan again. She's got intelligence. I'm not quite sure what his intelligence is. I can't remember really can't remember but okay that's fine let's end the day again let's see if everyone dies of their weaknesses that would be really sad that'd be terrible if we got to day nine everyone was just dead from that first contact okay you can see this i'm not easily excited greatest moments for humanity and human made ai alike we're not alone bibbly bobbly boo so basically there are aliens out there there's aliens out there that's exciting you appear to still be in poor health Dee Dee is still in poor health. Megan remains weak. Poor health is different to weak, is it? Is that different? Health is weak. Do I need to keep me alive by using the med kit? Yes, I do. Tom Thompson seems exactly the kind of person that would take the med kit and use it for himself. <laughs> and can we craft anything? No. No, we cannot craft anything at all. Uh, what do we need to make food? What do we need to make a tin of soup? 10, what's that, minerals? Chemicals, 10 chemicals. <laughs> it's made of chemicals. So what can we recycle that gives us chemicals? The handbook, but I want to keep that. The atomic battery isn't doing anything. And it could make us a lovely tin of soup. So let's recycle that. I'm a bit loath to do it, but whatever. We're going to recycle the atomic battery. That's fine. And the computer needs a decision. Oh no, Captain, one of the storage lockers is jammed and cannot be opened. It gets worse. It's my favourite locker. We will lose access to some of our supplies if we do nothing. Also, I will be sad. You need to act, Captain. Will you use your brains or your brawn to deal with this problem? Tom Thompson, he looks a little bit distressed as it is. His brains are probably not going to be right. Let's use a bit of strength. Brute strength. You know, a bit of anger therapy might be quite nice. If he just attacks the, <laughs> attacks the locker, it might make him a bit happier. So, um, yeah, we'll go down that route, please. Let's try that. Okay. So no one needs food. I am uh, availing myself of the med kit to make myself happy. We're recycling the atomic battery to turn it with the long-term plan of anyway, being into some soup. And we are going to try and smash this locker thing open with our bare hands. Okay, right. Next day, day 10 is on its way. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. Well, that was a surprise. I've died. I, I just used a med kit. What was wrong with the med kit? <laughs> What happened there? My valiant attempts to open the locker were futile. It's still jammed. Brute force does work occasionally if you actually have the strength for it. Worse yet, you put so much effort into opening the locker that you hurt yourself. I'm afraid nothing can be done about these injuries. This is the end of the line for you, Captain. So because I used my strength of two to try and open a locker, 
It killed me so much that my flesh fell off. What? What did I do to the locker? <laughs> okay. Oh, but at least we did some recycling and everyone else is hungry. Okie doke. Um, yeah, well, that was an absolutely pathetic attempt. Oh, that was even worse than previously. Right, that's it. We're having another go. Okay, visually, she doesn't really look like Captain Material in the game itself when you're on the ship. She looks a little bit sort of timid and a little bit terrified. But do you know what? Dee Dee is going to be our star captain. Emmett has failed. Tom has failed. Dee Dee is going to lead the charge. So, captain's goal, seven successful attribute decisions of any type. So, not necessarily agility, which she's very good at. But she's also got a little bit of intelligence and a little bit of strength. So, that's good. So, yeah, agility three. That's very good. And also, that's a good thing for the start when you have to do your captain's speech. Hopefully, the agility will pass. If we've got three of that, we'll do an agility speech. It'll pass and we'll get some benefit from it. I don't know what we'll get, but some bonus at least. Okay, let's have another go at 60 parsecs. And this time, let's not be quite as terrible. Okay, there she is. Right, there is Duct. Oh, she's absolutely blindingly quick. Oh, this is tremendous. Look how quick she is. Okay, we can get loads of stuff. So these top two rooms have got loads of useful stuff in. So grab that, grab that, grab that tape. Uh, oh, can we grab anything else from in here? Right, there's nothing else in that room. Right, throw the stuff into there. Go and grab everything you can from in here. So soup is going to be very valuable indeed. We'll have some soup. We'll have a sock puppet, please. And we'll have another soup. Right, Tom is just there. We'll go and get Tom. She's so fast. She's faster than Tom. That's brilliant. Now, I thought maybe she'd carry less stuff, but no, she doesn't. Right, Tom, we'll have you. We'll have that box of stuff, please. Give me the box. And then we're going to come back because the med kit's in there. So over half our time has gone. It flies by so quick. It goes so fast. Right, grab that. And now we need to find that handbook. Where is that? There it is. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, right, into the shuttle. 15 seconds. Grab anything that's left. That thing, that thing grab right we've got a few seconds we've got a few seconds grab anything grab anything there is oh a crate a crate a crate a crate grab that get in get in get in get in get in i've only got one person though but she's in she's in so we've only got tom however less food we're gonna be spending less food on everybody which is good but we also only have two people to make decisions we haven't got a third person to you know join in on the fixing airlocks and using intelligence and all that kind of stuff but the good news is they're all rounders they're both all rounder kind of people so we might be okay. Possibly might be, maybe. We're probably not going to be. But hopefully we will be okay. So day one is going to begin. Here we go. So we picked up quite a bit of stuff. We've got the handbook. The only thing we might not have a lot of is crafting resources. We've got 20 chemicals, 20 minerals, but no power. Okay. An all right amount of soup. That's good. Sock puppet. A first aid kit. An artifact. What does that do? I don't know. I don't know what an artifact does. And we got the book and we got some duct tape, which actually has proven to be fairly useful in the past. Right, okay, let's click this thing. Um, oh, good, yep. I should have came pre stocked with emergency food. Use it well. Lovely, there's a bit of food. And this is our speech thing. And we're going to try an agility speech because we've got agility three. So let's see if we can inspire Tom with a bit of an agility speech. Nobody needs to eat food. End the day. Let's see how we get on. Elaborating on the survival against all odds would have been quite a choice for a speech. Unfortunately, you decided to waffle on about that time you were not the captain and it was the best time of your life and a few other problems of an existential nature. Your fellow crewmate was far from convinced. It is certain your words made a mark, but probably not the one you wanted. Good grief. I've got a, a, an agility level of three, yet I still failed on doing an inspiring speech. Maybe you can't use agility or strength to do a speech. Maybe you have to choose intelligence and you do an intelligent speech. Maybe the other options just don't work. I don't know, but I mean, you know, I couldn't do, I couldn't have really had much higher skills, but okay, fine. The crafting thing is ready. What can we craft? Uh, yeah, okay, let's craft a communicator. That's probably going to come in useful at some point. So let's craft the communicator. Let's see what decision we need to make. What's that you're drawing, Captain? Is that supposed to be Ham, I understood you're fed up with soup and reminiscing about earth food. I would advise you no, you don't go down that road. Yeah, we had this before in the first one with Emmett. Here, I have a useful program for the occasion. It's called Everything is Not All Peaches and Cream. It should help you focus your mind on different things. Yes, let's go for that. It worked well for Emmett last time. Now, again, I don't know if this is, you know, if things are slightly different on each playthrough or if that's always a good thing if you accept it. I don't know. 
Day three. Will we ever get onto a planet? Success, Captain. Your culinary urges have been kept under control. We spent the afternoon talking about things other than food and circled back to agree on the many merits of tomato soup. Delicious tomato soup. Oh, we picked up a lighter. Of course we did. We picked up a lighter as well. Uh, okay, right. Crafting is complete. We've completed the communicator. That's very good news. We don't need to craft anything else particularly. We've got loads of things that we could recycle, but I'm not going to. What does the golden cow do? I really don't know what that does. I assume it's just a weighty thing that we can hit something with. <laughs> I really don't know. How intriguing. Ah, look at this. Captain, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is that using the airlock as a space toilet was a success. Bibbly bobbly boot. Right. Now, this is intriguing because I could fix it with a duct tape, which means we will lose our duct tape. But last time I pressed that, I pressed that option and it went, oh, it's all fine anyway. It sort of sorted itself out. I wonder if I do that again and save our duct tape for a future use, if that will, you know, have the same outcome. If, if whenever you pick, whenever you come across this toilet is, you know, the uh, airlock toilet's jammed, do you always need, can you always just pick this or is it going to be different? Let's experiment a bit and see how we get on. Don't need to craft anything. Um, yeah, end of the day is ready. Nobody needs food right now. So let's end the day and let's see if we're covered in an explosion of toilety waste or not. Okay, day four. Um, doing nothing about the airlock toilet was risky. Luckily for you, the door unjammed on its own. Probably because the odor buildup made it corrosive. Okay, so I don't think people are affected anyway. Caffeinated. Oh, I like the fact that she's caffeinated. Yeah, I did say that was coffee. Yes, okay. So she's caffeinated. I don't know what that means. Is that a good thing for her to be? I really don't know. I'm not sure. But we kept our tape. We kept our tape for another time, which is very, very good. Okay, Captain, thus far I've kept the shuttle in artificial gravity, but I need to see how well you and Tom can adapt to a zero gravity or weightless environment. I like the fact that it reflects who's there. It's not got a sort of generic, the crew kind of message. This one says how well you and Tom, it knows that we're on board. And earlier on it said you and your crewmate, not crewmates. That's quite nice. That's a nice little thing that keeps, you know, it doesn't break the immersion. That's quite nice. Uh, okay, so we did this before about a zero g test and she's very agile so i think we pick her that makes perfect sense and what i'm going to do is to stave off some early hunger because there's only two of us and we've got quite a bit of soup let's give them a bit of food each to make sure the hunger doesn't start building up that is going to be my plan and then eventually we'll get to somewhere where we can land so every four days we'll give them some food uh good you passed the zero gravity test with flying colours. I stopped the shuttle's rotation. You drifted out of your seat, navigating the weightless environment like an Olympic swimmer. You didn't even break anything. Ah, I wonder if you pick someone who's not quite as agile. They smash a load of things apart because they're clumsy. I don't know. The data I gathered will be extremely useful in the future. Okay, uh, we're going to use 10 of our science points to craft some soup because that means we will have uh, six soups which is another three portions each, which is very, very good. So we'll take that. And here we go. You found a couple of rusted and swollen swollen cans of soup in the darkest corner of the ship. Someone must have put them there a long time ago and then completely forgotten about them. It doesn't look all that safe to eat, but then again, it's canned soup. It's supposed to last for 737 years. Will you keep the cans? Yeah, why not? Absolutely, go for it. Free food is good food. <laughs> why not take some mouldy old cans of food? Absolutely. We'll make another can of soup anyway, so we should have eight. So either we're going to have some horrible poisonous food, which has made us all ill, or I've got some extra food. No, there you go. We got an extra two tins, plus we crafted another one. That is excellent news. That is good news. We're doing very well for food stuff. Okay, right. Computer. Captain, our systems are working below their optimal levels. Well, make them work optimally then. You're the computer. I was able to determine that our wiring might be at fault. I suggest you take a look under the proverbial hood and fix the wires before a malfunction occurs. The wires are stuffed in a dark corner, tangled and dusty. You'll have to figure out how to fix this by yourself. I trust your instincts, not that I have a choice. Stuffed in a dark corner, tangled and dusty. Do I go and try and use my agility to, you know, get into that dark corner, you know, bend myself into the corner? Or do I try and use my bit of intelligence? Part of me saying your intelligence is probably the right option, but because she's got three agility and it has said they're in a dark corner tangled, I'm kind of thinking maybe we use agility to get in there and untangle them and, you know, do some amazing things. So yeah, let's go down that route. 
Nobody needs to eat any food. This is all. This is going surprisingly well. What's going to happen from this? Am I going to blow a bit of the ship up from trying to use agility to mend wires? That's the worry. Right, day seven. Come on, we can do. We can do okay. Are you okay, Captain? Your frizzy hairstyle tells me you just got electrocuted. Perhaps you shouldn't play with wires if you're not agile enough to avoid getting shocked. I've got an agility of three. I can't have much more agility. I don't think anybody else from the starting captains that we choose from has a higher agility value. So, I mean, how are you supposed to pass that test if the person with the highest agility is not agile enough? I don't know. I'm afraid that burn won't heal quickly. I suggest using medical supplies if there are any to spare. Just be more careful next time, please. Scrubbing you off the shuttle walls will not be fun if something goes wrong. Tom is hungry. So Dee Dee is not. Also, she's not injured. She's not injured either. Okay. I wonder if that message was slightly incorrect. I wonder if something weird has gone on there. Because I said, oh, use medical supplies to make sure she's okay. But health-wise, she is fine. Okay. Something has gone a little bit wibbly there. But okie doke, never mind. Okay, what's the decision? Well... That's unexpected. Captain, there's cheese in the pantry. At least, I think it's cheese. I don't know how it got there. Did someone sneak it on board? Is there an infestation of alien mould? Was it the French? Well, the French do love a cheese. Desperate times call for desperate measures, Captain. We don't know the origin of the mystery cheese. Will you eat it anyway? Yeah, we've got a med kit. Absolutely. Rock on. Let's eat the mystery French cheese. <laughs> Why the heck not? So, uh, yeah, we'll do that. Tom is hungry. Give Tom food. Uh, in fact, yeah, we got some extra food. We will have food as well. Just to keep our energy up. Keep us fed. Yes. End of the day. Let's eat the mystery cheese. Let's hope that it hasn't made us green or our head fall off or something horrendous. Day eight. Please be alive. Yes, we are alive. You decide to eat the strange cheese you found in the pantry. Unfortunately, the cheese wasn't cheese at all. It was an inedible soap product. Oops. You and the crew are even hungrier than you were before. You need to be more careful what you put in your mouth, Captain. You should eat something, Captain. Oh, that's a shame. Tom, are you both hungry? Okay, well, we got those two extra free soup, so that'll have to do, I suppose. Uh, Captain, fantastic news. The scanner have picked up a container floating in our vicinity. I wonder what's inside. What now, Captain? Should we try to pull the container on board? Absolutely, yes. Go and grab a container. You can both have some food. Let's see what's inside the mysterious space crate. Oh, it's going to be something horrible, isn't it? It's not going to be a nice supply of lovely things. It's going to be all terrible monster viruses. Oh, I'm, I'm just beaten up. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, dear. That mysterious cargo the scanner spotted yesterday is now on board. Open the box in three, two, one. Look. There is something inside the container. A light. It's flashing. Something is beeping. If we were to guess what it was, a bomb would have made the top five of our list. A bomb? Oh, sh you are no longer hungry. You are gravely hurt, ma'am. Tom is no longer hungry. Tom got hurt. Brilliant. So the thing in space was a bomb. It was a flipping bomb. Okay. <laughs> so I'm hurt, but at least I'm not hungry. However, I can't cure both of us. I can't cure both of us. Well, the health there says okay. I don't fully understand where these things are coming from. So you're hurt, but but your health is okay. I don't really understand what's going on there. Do I need to use the med kit on you? Or does that only affect health in there? I feel as though I should use the med kit on, on me, on the captain, just to make sure. And here we go. This is the thing about the transmissions. Um, I think we've both got an intelligence of one so it doesn't really make any difference i'll do it don't worry i'll do it don't worry tom um yeah okay oh hang on no she's got three one one doesn't it? actually he might have two he might have two intelligence thinking about it yeah we'll confirm tom actually thinking about it maybe tom needs to do that okay right end of the day let's see if we can decipher the alien transmissions and let's see if we can ever get near a flipping alien planet That's, i just want to land on a planet someone let me land on alien planet Okay, I am healthy again. First contact. Tom is still looking pretty chipper, even though he's got bits of himself missing. Hooray! Aliens! Three days. Can we survive for three days? We must be able to. Tom is still wounded. Uh, my wounds have healed. You look healthy, Captain. You now feel vigorous. I don't know what that means, though. What does that mean? I feel caffeinated and vigorous. Dee Dee should be absolutely bouncing off the walls. Why does she look so glum? I don't know. Whereas Tom is hurt. And we cannot craft us. We can. We can craft a first aid kit. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Craft a first aid kit for Tom, please. Yes. Maybe because we had one in. 
We couldn't craft one. Now we've used it, we can craft another one. Okay, Tom, worry not. We're going to get a first aid kit for you, my good sir. Uh, okay, computer, what next? Last night I was browsing through some designs of beautiful machines. Never you mind why. <laughs> the computer's a perv. Now pay attention. I found a food dispensing machine on board. Oh yeah, has it got nice buttons? All shuttles and the Astro Citizen program were equipped with one. As is missing a lever. But apart from that, it seems functional. It's hardly rocket science. So you should manage to fix it. But how? Oh look, the shovel actually comes in useful. I did wonder what the shovel was for. Um, Okay, we saved our tape from earlier. Let's see if we can use the tape. And, I don't know fix it somehow using the tape. Why not? Worth a go. We've got the tape. We saved it from last time. We don't need to eat any food. End the day. Let's see. So we're crafting a first aid kit for Tom. Hopefully he will survive for a few days. And then to day 11. Come on, we're nearly at the alien planet. We're nearly at the alien planet. Tom is still fine. Tom still looks wounded. He's still smiling, so he's fine. Official government research show there is, shows there is not a thing in the universe that cannot be fixed with duct tape. You were very resourceful to tape a chair leg where the lever used to be. Now just a little pull and there you go, Captain. A brand new can of soup straight from the vending machine. Unfortunately, there was only one portion inside. Don't worry, I already got rid of the remaining junk. Oh, so we've got a tin of soup for our tape. Oh, our tape's still there. Our tape is still there. We didn't use the whole roll. That's splendid. Two days away. Tom is wounded. We're both hungry, but that's fine. We've got soup. So, okay, we'll do that. There is nothing to report, Captain. Oh. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. I suggest you... Captain, would you mind covering your mouth when you yawn? I thought you got a good night's sleep. Wait, could this be... Boredom? Yes, I have heard that you humans in excitement in their lives to function properly. How curious. Captain, you're sitting in the state-of-the-art space shuttle, drifting through the deep cosmos full of wonder and mystery. Can you at least pretend you're having a good time? So we can either do nothing, or we can use our sock puppet friend, or we can use the handbook. I'm tempted to use the handbook, because that's a very versatile, useful thing. So we'll do that... And, because we're hungry, let's have a soup each. Beautiful. How long is it until we land? And how long is it until the uh, first aid kit's crafted? I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Oh, this is very exciting. Are we nearly at the planet yet? We must be. Maybe another day. Maybe another day. Yeah, maybe it's day 13. We're going to get to the planet. Well, right, we've eaten some food. Uh, you remain exceptionally healthy. You are no longer hungry. Tom is no longer hungry. Is Tom better now? Okay, yesterday started pretty slow, but you managed to turn it around. Browsing your Astro Citizen handbook on the toil, I mean, in the airlock, you found a set of exercises and decided to try them out. You did jumping jacks all afternoon. How fun. <laughs> Indeed. But more importantly, it was healthy. You feel much better now. Tomorrow, we are going to land on a planet at long last. Oh, Tom is still hurt. It's just no longer telling me he's hurt. He's got bored of telling me he's hurt. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. So that's still crafting that. We're going to land on a planet tomorrow at long, long last. Okay, what is our next decision to make? Have you looked in the mirror recently, Captain? I couldn't ever notice you seem to be afflicted with a rash of some sort. Oh, goodness me, let's look in the book. Let's take a look in the book and see if I can figure out my rash. Nobody's hungry. Okay, so here we go. So we don't need to give them food. I'm using my book to figure out what this rash is. The, the ever-versatile book. And um, tomorrow we should have another first aid kit crafted. Now, this is intriguing because if this rash turns out to be something terrible, I might end up using it on me anyway. So, OK, let's end the day and see what this brings. So, yeah, we're going to go to a planet. I don't know what this entails. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. So day 13 begins. There it is. That's, I saw the planet. I saw the planet. Hello there, Captain. You're looking very rested today. I can see that you found a way to deal with that mysterious rash that was bothering you earlier. <laughs> Indeed. You couldn't figure out what the cause was, but at least you found instructions on how to treat it in your handbook. You didn't have a name, so you gave it one of Cosmic Flu. <laughs> how thoughtful of you. Tom remains wounded. Not for long. Crafting completed. Tom is hungry. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Tom can have... Uh, we'll ration soup to everybody, actually. And Tom can have a med kit as well. And now there is a red planet just there. I can see it just there. Can we land on it, please? Can we land on the planet? Mom, a big, really big surprise has cropped up on my scanners. A dark, swirly sky planet has appeared before us. It's covered in a giant storm, but beneath the dark swells, my scanners detect hazy, indistinct heat signatures and a multitude of structures. A thunderous world is probably an improvement over this mind-bogglingly empty vacuum. Should I initiate the landing protocol? Absolutely. I've been waiting to land on a planet for flipping ages. Yes. So Tom 
eat and heal yourself. Dee Dee, eat something just to keep energy. In fact, no. That's a waste if she's not hungry. Let's not let's not waste the food. If she's not hungry, she's not hungry. That's fine. Okay, let's land. So Tom's getting food in her medkit thing, and we are going to try and land on a planet. Okay, do I have to do anything? Oh, God, it doesn't require skill, does it? Oh, no. Do I have to do something? Oh, no, I think it's just a cutscene. We... Okay, I would say that was that was a crash. <laughs> I would say we just crashed. Yes, I, th <laughs> I think we are not in a good place. Oh, I didn't read what that said because I was looking at something else. What was the name of the planet? On our descent toward the storm-ridden planet, Crewmate Thompson piped up and said he recognised the storm below. Looks like our predictions for Earth after a Soviet nuclear attack, he said with a pause. But with you in command, Mom, we can weather anything. With Tom's note in mind, you beautifully directed our craft away from particularly green parts of the atmosphere and onto a safe resting spot of the planet. Unfortunately, however, atmospheric electricity fried the communicator on the way down. Oh dear, that's not, that's not a good thing. Once on the ground, Tom looked out and realised this wasn't at all like a nuclear Soviet attack. This was something else. This planet's surface has experienced a number of wars and traumas, nuclear or otherwise. We'd best be wary while exploring, Captain. Right, so now she's hungry. That's fine. Tom is no longer hurt. Tom is no longer hungry. Tom looks vigorous. Okay, so now Tom has got to the vigorous skill. And there's some broken stuff out there. Okay, now how do we go out? How do we go out onto the uh, onto the planet? Well, let's make a decision first. Outside, Mum. A caravan of sorry figures and grim wagons are plodding past the shuttle, hanging their heads. You open the shuttle door to watch them pass when suddenly one pops up right at your side. It's a little waif like Phobian. Ah, I must be on like Phobia or something. <laughs> In a silvery regalia. Blood is spattered inside its goggles. Do you wish to ignore its attention, offer health care, or prefer a new mask? You notice a holster on its hip with a dangerous looking weapon. I have no option except to just ignore you. And you're probably going to try and shoot me because you sound mean. Um, does this thing offer me any information about how to go out and about? What Do these dials do anything? Oh, oh, okay. Um, that's interesting. Hang on, I must have made seven successful attribute decisions of any type. Oh, no, attribute decisions. I've probably only made a couple, haven't I? Uh, oh, no, there's little options. Okay. Oh, that's useful. I didn't know that. I didn't know that at all. Okay, fine. Right, come out of that. How do we go outside? Do we go outside from here? Spacesuit? Ah ha ha! Okay. Destination, character and equipment. Three of twelve locations have been discovered on this planet. So what's that? The Glade? The Radio Zone? Or the Warhead Town? Let's go to the Glade. It sounds far nicer. A chance for minerally things. Uh, hazards? Some sort of grass? And length is three o'clock? Okay. That doesn't really help me very much. Oh, look at that. The chance for sciencey stuff and whatever that is. I don't know what that is, but the hazards are radiation, some grass things, and a squid. And the length is two of those. Or Warhead Town. The chance is quite high. There's only one hazard, but it takes a long time. I think we need the sciencey point things in order for us to. Uh, craft some more soup. So let's go there. Warhead Town. Yes. Who do you want to send? Well, I don't have much choice. It looks like I'm sending Tom. Um, yeah. Okay. And the equipment I'm sending Tom with. Ah, now this is like, um, this is like 60 seconds. I'm going to send him with the book. The book might be useful. The, the guidebook thing here, Bob. And oh, what's that? Upgrade to unlock. Upgrade the spacesuit. Can I upgrade the spacesuit in the in the machine thingamajigger? Oh, maybe now that's unlocked. We can upgrade the spacesuit. Um, now, a gun would be a nice thing to send him with. But alas, I don't think I can send him with a weapon. So let's send him with the communicator. Maybe he can communicate with the squiddy monsters that seem to be there. So, um, yeah, let's do that. Let's send Tom on the expedition. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. <laughs> oh, dear. And, um, right, the decision has been made. We can't do anything about that. Nobody needs food. Oh, no, Dee Dee does need some food. She needs to eat something. Okay, you eat the food. Tom is going out on a mission. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, let's just check the thing. Upgrade. Um, no, it doesn't seem we can upgrade. Maybe we have to upgrade the crafting module to then upgrade the suit, possibly. I don't know. Or do we need to upgrade the navigation module or something? Is that what we need to do? 
Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Let's find out. Let's go to the next day and see what that brings. Ah, oh, so Tom has gone and Dee Dee is all on her own on the shuttle. The creature from the plodding caravan looked at you and thrust a plastic data bank into your hand before turning and leaving with the rest of the troop. I got a chance to scan the drive, Captain. Apparently these aliens knew a world-wrecking war was coming and they were still burning silos when it happened. In the decades since, they have never taken off their suits and have mutated to reside inside them. I don't know whether to feel pity or fear, ma'am. Captain, the expedition module in the back of the cabin is now active. Indeed, I figured that out all by myself. All you need to do is stuff someone inside a spacesuit and send them outside. I have done that. Thank you, computer. Tom set off for a shanty-looking settlement to the south. I'm keen to see what he discovers on this outing. I am no longer hungry. So does that mean he's taking... Did that thing mean three days? I think that means three days, doesn't it? The little timer thing on there. Um, okay, well, it's all down to me then. It's all down to me. Uh, when uh, you say when you woke up today, there was something different about the shuttle. Yes, there's only me in it. Was somebody inside when you were asleep? I saw nothing, Captain. Maybe you shouldn't have put me in sleep mode last night because my screens were too bright. Someone sat in your chair, you say. You suspect the visitor might still be on board, so a thorough search of the shuttle is in order. Well, okay, I've only got the strength option to choose. At least I've got a point in it. So, you know, I'm not utterly, utterly disadvantaged. I don't think I'm hungry, am I? Okay, well, that's it. Tom is having a little wander about. I don't need to eat anything. We're using strength to figure out the little issue. Okay, this is, we're doing better than we have done on our previous two runs. We're doing far better. This is good. Day 16 is on its way. She's not dead or injured, which is good. Last night, you hunted high and low for an unwelcome visitor you thought was on board. Becoming increasingly frustrated and tired, you knocked down the soup shelf. A tin exploded. You spent the rest of the night cleaning up your mess and getting the shuttle back in shape. The soup is gone. Dee Dee, you fool. That was your soup. That was your tin of soup that you were going to have to survive. We've got nothing to make soup with now. Oh, dearie me. Um, also, this computer screen has gone a little bit crazy looking. Hello there, Captain. Might I ask what you are, uh, what you are going, no, no, why you're going through the files? You're not really meant to see the contents of my digital storage unit. Ah, this is Protocol X. We saw this with Emmett, didn't we? A secret protocol. It was meant to be an experiment. The consequence of initiating the protocol would be severe. Use your skills and do something, Captain. Let's try and use our intelligence as best we can. It's only an intelligence of one. It's better than an intelligence of nothing. Let's see if that sees us through. How long is it until Tom gets back? I don't know. I want Tom to come back. Day 17. Oh no. Oh no, she's going a bit mad. She's going a bit crazy and she's hugging a chair. Despite your best efforts, you weren't able to stop Protocol X. A fear agent has been released through the ventilation shaft, which is why you thought giant ants are crawling all over the ship. I am terribly sorry about that, Captain. There are a lot of protocols devised by the masterminds behind the Astro Citizen program that should never be initiated. The Astro Citizen program people, are they like the space division of vault tech possibly? Your sanity has been shaken by the experience, obviously. There's no avoiding that, I'm afraid. So I'm very healthy, but I've gone mad and I'm a bit hungry. So I can't eat anything because I've got no food and I've gone insane. Um, let's see if my sock puppet friend helps me regain my sanity. Um, I can't do anything about the hunger, unfortunately. We've got these tins of soup. Can we just chuck them out to the planet? <laughs> Can we tidy up a bit, please? Um, and I've got no idea when Tom's going to come back. We need Tom to come back to do some more stuff. Oh, hang on. I need to make a decision. Of course I do. Even though I'm mad. Mom, do you smell that? Fumes are coming from somewhere on board. Let me check. Yes, Captain. A combination of both radiation and flammable gas is seeping from a small hole on the shuttle floor. There must be some kind of leak below the craft. How should we deal with this hazard? A shovel? The lighter? A mask or nothing at all? I'm going to pick lighter because it's the one option that I've got other than nothing. Because I haven't got a mask and I haven't got a shovel. However, flammable gas and lighter doesn't sound like the best thing for me to be doing. But you know what? It's the only other option we've got. And why would it be there otherwise? So yeah, let's do that. And then let's pull the lever. I'm going to use the sock puppet thing to, um, to, to try and retain my sanity. If I don't blow up the shuttle first because I'm faffing about with a lighter and flammable gas. Please be alive. Okay, she's sane. She's sane, but she's starving. Tom, I need you to come back. When I said the gas seeping out of the cabin boards was flammable, I meant it more as a warning, not encouragement. Putting a lighter to it wasn't smart, Captain, but it worked. Very lucky. The pop of the gas's tiny explosion seemed to seal up the leak below the shuttle. Curiously, the burning vapour smelled like good old Thanksgiving dinner. The memory left you extremely hungry. Oh, no. So that's made me starving. 
The madness has released its hold on me. I'm no longer insane, but I'm starving. Can we recycle anything? Can we recycle anything to then make soup? So what do we need? Ten, uh, ten of those things, sort of chemical things. What can we recycle to make chemicals? What about this artifact thing? I don't know what else it's good for. Let's recycle the artifact now and then craft soup tomorrow and then eat the soup. I think that's what we're going to have to do because otherwise we're just going to starve to death. The planet's crust appears to have undergone a multitude of drastic traumas because over a hill nearby you find a broad chasm running to the world's core, a toothy rift in the tectonic crust. Oh, I've gone out, have I? Am I exploring out of the thing then? Oh, okay. Most interestingly, on the near side of the chasm is half an angular alien bunker. Its counterpart, mostly on the far side and in ruins, but a cable runs between the two, linking up to small safe-like objects on the far side. Do you wish to tightrope over to the container or attempt to pull it over to you? Well, I've now got an agility of a star, so I assume I've maxed out my agility. So, yes, I will kind of... Oh, and I've got no strength anymore. My strength has gone down in favour of my agility by the look of it. So yeah, I'll tightrope over to the container and probably fall to my doom down a giant chasm. But never mind. Uh, I've got no food to eat. I've got nothing to do there. Tom's still out and about exploring. We're recycling that cow thing. Because I don't know what it does in order to make some soup. And I'm tightrope walking. Okay. End of the day. Please don't starve to death. Because that would just be a terrible way to end this. Because we're doing quite well. We're doing quite well. It's day 19. Tom is still not back. Deedee is still there. A human on a wire, you deftly tiptoed across the crevice near the shuttle. Without a wobble, you approached the safe, which turned out not to be a safe. It turned out to be a fridge. An empty fridge. At least if another bomb goes off in this world, you know where to hide. You're still hungry as a wolf. Eat something before it's too late. Recycling operation complete. Okay, I've got to make a tin of soup. Can I last until tomorrow? I really hope so. Captain, we were able to detect transmissions of an unknown origin. Oh, and Tom's got the communicator. The communications console has been damaged. We can't do anything with it. We could hardwire a primitive field communicator to bypass the damaged subsystems, but we can't because Tom's took the communicator with him because I thought it might be more useful for him. So we can't do anything with it. Go to the next day. Please let me survive so I can eat the soup I've just crafted. Please let me live. Do not starve to death, Dee Dee. Do not starve to death. Day 20. Is she still alive? Yes, she's still alive. Lack of a handheld communicator effectively stopped you from fixing the communications console. Too bad. We remain stuck in this place with no way to contact the outside world. Our situation has not improved. I urge you to connect an operational communicator. Yes, yes, yes. And I've made some soup. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is, yes, ration her the soup. Where's Tom gone? Tom's been gone an awfully long time. Please come back, Tom. Captain, I'm detecting a troubling buildup of mental tension. Uh, recommended course of action, throwing an epic party. Okay, well, we don't need to do that because we didn't do it last time. It probably is good for your morale, but whatever. Um, I Can we craft something else? We can craft an artifact. Where did we get that from? Where did we get those minerals from? I thought we'd got rid of our artifact. Uh, I know we did, because we got rid of it to turn it into that, into chemicals, which we then used to make the soup that we're going to eat. Okay, fine. Well, that's the uh, that's the end of the day sorted. We're not having a party. We're eating some soup. We're waiting for Tom. Day 21. Are we on? This is, this is way better than we've done on any of our previous runs. Day 21. Is Tom back? <gasps> Tom's there. Hey, Tom. How are you? Hey there, Captain Buzzkill. Yes, indeed. So you didn't like the fact that I didn't party. Tom came back, Captain. The town to the south turned out to be a settlement built around an unexploded warhead. <laughs> really? Wow, a bit like Megaton. Law in the settlement is played fast and loose. Tom came back with a bloodied nose, ravenous and pretty shook up. He doesn't look like he'd got a bloodied nose. He said the would-be lawmen in Warhead Town gave him a bit of a bother. The bruises do the talking. A random phobian flung dirty water into the street. Tom checked it with the handbook and decided it was worth collecting. Oh, the handbook was tremendous. So we got 10 sciencey things for that. The greasy river that runs through Warhead Town sweats oil. Okay, chemicals, good for crafting. So 21 chemical points. At one point, Tom encountered a hag-like phobian. Streaky hair growing out of its headpiece. It muttered in a wormy native tongue and shoved an artifact into his hands. Tom spotted an unusual number of undergarments hanging from a line. He didn't hesitate to grab a sock. We're both hungry, which is unfortunate because we've not got any food. And Tom is really tired. Okay, 
That's exciting. And we can craft ourselves some food, very importantly. Let's craft some soup as a matter of absolute priority. What have we got to deal with? Oh, it needs the atomic battery that we've got rid of. Well, of course it does. Captain, my weather systems are detecting a storm on the horizon. It's moving fast, so it'll hopefully pass by tomorrow. But this one could get nasty. Thunder, lightning, gale force winds, sharp objects howling at you from every which way. I'd like to keep monitoring the storm's movement throughout the night, but doing so will require my sensors to run on battery power, as it is unadvisable to leave the main generator on through a storm. What do you want to do? I don't have a battery, so no. Let's not monitor the storm and get whatever lovely advantage we've got from it. But now the communicator's back. Can we go, can we communicate with those aliens now? Can we do the signally thing, please? That'd be really lovely if we could do that, but alas, no. Okay. So we've got one food on the way. We can make another one for tomorrow, which is fine. Uh, you chose to wait out the storm rather than run the monitoring systems on the battery power. The wind shrieked and brutal rain pelted against the walls of the shuttle. But that was it. By morning, the weather was calm again. You spent the morning sifting through the washed up junk pods, but it was just a bunch of waterlogged crap. Tom is still vigorous. We've made soup. Tom has rested. Now, I think that means Tom can go back out. I think that means Tom can go back out on another mission. Attention, Captain. I am detecting a leak in our reactor coolant system. In case you're wondering, this is not good. Did I mention you should not inhale anything that comes out of the reactor? Please don't. Also, how are you going to fix it? This is unfortunate. Because this happened last time and this poisoned us all. I can't fix it. I've got no mask. That's horribly unfortunate. Oh, no. A handbook is damaged. It's all ripped. Tom, what did you do to it, man? That was the most important thing we had. Um, can we send Tom back out? Even though he's hungry. I think we might need to feed Tom first. Right. Craft another tin of soup, please. Absolutely lovely. Tom can eat the soup today. Yes, we can't do anything. So Tom can have today's ration of soup. End the day. And then tomorrow we'll send Tom out uh, into the wilderness again to see what happens. If anything happens. If we're not all dead. Because we might have all died from the coolant leak that we've just given ourselves. Oh. Tom is... Looking a bit coy. Okay. Tom, are you feeling all right? Captain, I understand some people enjoy inhaling radioactive substances, but clearly neither you nor your crewmate were one of those folks. It took the leak a while to stop on its own. You will also take a while before both of you are well again. We've crafted soup. Tom is weak. Tom reported being glad to have you as his captain. Okay. Uh, so he's hungry and weak. Ah, but he's loyal. He's now gone to loyal. Okay. Is that good? Let's craft another soup. And... Okay. Oh, that's good, I suppose. I don't really know. Captain, the communication remains broken. We are completely deaf. Blind, even. Okay, yes. Yes, use the communicator. We've got one now. And because Tom's hungry, I'm going to feed him again. I'm going to try and feed him up to make sure that he's okay. Craft soup. Use communicator. Yes. End of the day. Oh, this is going way better than previously. It's going far better than previously. We're actually on the planet and we seem to be surviving, all right? Uh, day 24. Hello, world. Great success, Captain. Communicator attached to the communications console works like a charm. I won't judge the aesthetics since we can finally receive and answer transmissions. Now all we need to do is wait for someone to contact us. Someone will find us. Eventually. You can tell Tom was amazed by what we have achieved today. He almost smiled. There is hope, Captain. You remain vigorous, ma'am. Tom is still in poor health. We've made soup. She is starving. Tom is no longer hungry. Okay, so first things first, she has soup. Absolutely fine. Then I'm going to send Tom back out. Um, the radio zone has an awful lot of hazards. That offers minerals, but we might get something else from the glade. So yeah, go out to the glade. It's Tom. What can we send with him? Uh, a lighter? Because he's in a wood. So it might help him start some fires to keep alive. And an artifact because I don't know what it's for other than carrying around. I'm not entirely sure. Tom, you're going on an adventure. Have fun, my friend. Have fun. Uh, I'm detecting high levels of an unknown toxin in our air system. Analysis shows it isn't T0. Oh, two. <laughs> the T0. Too dangerous. But it has hallucinogenic properties. So you shouldn't be breathing it long term. The air filtration system got jostled around during the crash. And a crack may have opened. What will you use to seal the crack? Duct tape. Absolutely. Duct tape ahoy. Tom's going on adventure. We're using duct tape. She's eating soup. Rock on day 25. 
Okay, Tom has gone. You used tape to repair the crack. It's never a bad idea to use some tape. Seconds after the crack was sealed, you began to feel better. Tom has gone a-wandering. <laughs> Let's hope he doesn't enter in gingerbread houses. I should eat something. Can we craft food? We have no resources. We've got one science -y point left. That's it. We might need to recycle something for... Oh, no. The handbook is broken. and We can repair. We can't afford to repair it. That needs science -y points as well. I don't really know what to do. Let's see if Tom comes back. Oh, the communicator's patched in. It looks really terrible. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. It looks rubbish. Captain, I found something interesting on the surface of the planet. Looks like somebody passed their time by playing a supersized version of tic-tac-toe. That's noughts and crosses for the UK people. But yeah, so noughts and crosses. But never completed this particular game. The game pieces consist of minerals that we could use. Now, I'm not one for ruining someone else's fun. But I think the winner is clear by looking at the board. So I shouldn't mind if we mess up their zeros and nexus. Should we take the liberty of gathering those pieces and using them as resources? Yes, absolutely. Go and ruin the alien game. <laughs> Why the heck not? Tom's still out. We've got nothing else to do. Rock on day 26. Are we still going to be alive on day 26? Because we are hungry. I hope she hasn't starved to death. No, she's still there. The dismantling of the supersized tic-tac-toe game in progress was a success. Whoever abandoned it was nowhere to be seen, and you returned with quite a hefty load of minerals, so 20 minerals. Yes, they're a bit hard to carry to the ship, being ginormous and all, but you perform splendidly. That'll teach them to leave their toys lying on the floor, or our planet surface in this case. I'm sure nobody will mind. So what can we craft with all those minerals? A communicator that we've already got. Can you recycle? What can we recycle a communicator into? Can we recycle a communicator into into chemicals? Do you know what? It's probably worth a go. Let's build ourselves a communicator and then see if we can immediately break it down and turn it into chemicals. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to starve. This is not going well. We found something interesting, Captain. There's this lonely statue. A tentacled creature shaped vaguely human-like with hands outstretched as if in religious blessing. The inscription is barely legible, but says something about... And honour, in quotes, which is worrying, and service to a higher cause. The way the statue cups its hands downward reminds me of something. Ah, yes, of course. It's almost exactly the shape of your head. What a coincidence. What? Okay, it's a stretch, but perhaps there is a reward in sticking your noggin in the statue's hands. What do you say, Captain? Will you try it? Do you know what? I'm stuck on Alien World with no chance of anything. Tom's wandering around a wood. Why not? Let's just stick my head into an alien statue's hands and see what the heck happens. Because I'm starving to death anyway. Maybe it'll give me a, I don't know, a bowl of porridge or something. I don't know. Come on. Please, please tell me I am still alive, though. Day 27. Did I get murdered by a thing? No. I'm still alive. I am still alive. Okay, Captain, this one's on me. Note to self. Ominous fragmented inscriptions on creepy-looking statues equals capital B, bad. When you put your head into the statue's receptacle, nothing happened for a while. Mildly annoyed, you started walking away. And that's when you passed out. Not sure what the statue did exactly, but the drool coming from the side of your mouth can't be a good sign. We'll run some simple mathematical tests later to see just how badly you were affected. In the meantime, if you could, if you could uh, well, hang on, I've scrolled it down. It's gone weird. From trying to fit your hand in your mouth, <laughs> that would be lovely. Mum, Tom has not yet returned from the weird woods to the northeast. The chances of him coming back are increasingly slim at this point. Oh no! Oh no! Tom's dead. <laughs> Tom, no, my only friend. Not all is lost, though. For I allowed myself to pull out another exploration suit. It's just like the one you had before, although you have no one left to send on an expedition anyway. Great. Crafting completed. New item available. I've got a communicator. Can I dismantle the communicator into... Yes, I can. I can dismantle the communicator and then tomorrow turn it into food if I haven't starved to death. Tom's gone. I'm on my own. Oh, I can't do anything with this decision either because uh, he took the lighter with him. Of course he did. Of course he did. I am a machine and machines cannot hear voices. The voices that I'm not hearing right now are getting very loud though. Oh, you hear them too? My weight sensors are picking something up as well. A two-dimensional species. That explains why my cameras miss them. Quite vicious, I gather. With one decisive yell, the voices are approaching fast. The air inside the door looks very empty, yet very hostile all of a sudden. How will you defend us, Captain? By doing precisely nothing, because I have no means of defending us. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to be two-dimensional to death. Oh no. Come on, I want to get to day 30. That was an initial goal. I did say I would like to get to day 30. 
day 28 and okay i'm still alive i'm still alive i just look a bit kind of grim about it but okay a two-dimensional species attacked your ship you listened uh, listened i listened you listened cautiously as the angry voices groaned with effort several laborious hours later their two-dimensional barricade was ready resembling a thin origami napkin to your untrained 3d eyes it crumpled when you sneezed <laughs> The voices sound devastated. You tried to look impressed and fearful, but they didn't notice. Right, we've uh, turned the communicator into some chemicals. Now we need to craft soup out of the chemicals before we starve and make a decision. We're receiving a signal from deep space. It seems to be a pulsar, except its pulse isn't like anything I've seen before. Pulsars are neutron stars with an extremely fast rotation. They emit beams of EM radiation that can appear to be intelligent in origin, but this one is intelligent in origin. Do you want to decode it? Of course I do. Why would I not want to decode an intelligent message from space? Okay, we've got the soup queued up, have we? Yeah, we're making soup. Do, do the message scanning. End the day. Please live. Please don't starve to death. We're nearly on day 30. My initial goal was to get to day 30. Come on. Day 29. Be alive. Be alive. Be alive. You're still alive. Beautiful. Plain whaling. You rushed to decode the Pulsar's message. It was an advertisement. <laughs> Don't miss Zizak Sport Emporium. Voted best in the universe. Free gun giveaway still going on. Turn left off the Super Strand in 462 parsecs. Muting this ad may lead to death. After the message played, a gun materialized next to you. Yay! Free stuff. Okay. I've got a gun. Beautiful. Crafting completed. Some soup. Okay. Uh, we can craft three items now. I can craft another communicator. I can, can craft a lighter. Or I could craft an artifact. Let's craft a lighter. I suspect that's going to be useful. We'll have a lighter, please. Um, and make a decision. Captain, our communication equipment is detecting something. I don't think it's transmission. I think it's a whale. Something is crying out for help. Would you like to go and investigate? Well, of course I would. Yes, I would. I'd love to. And uh, give me some soup, please. And we're crafting a lighter. But let's go and see what the mysterious whaling was or is. The good news is we're on day 30. My initial goal has been achieved. She looks a little bit sort of more sort of alive. She's not leaning back quite as much. And you went out to investigate the eerie crying sound on the stormy dystopian plains and came back with a stumbling little alien. It seems weak, possibly injured, and as lonely as an emergency escape pod flying through the cosmos. You brought it in and propped it up in a corner. Oh, we've got an alien friend. Where? There! There! <laughs> little sort of masked alien. Okay, we've got a lighter and I am hungry. Um, hello? Oh, oh, he makes a little noise. He goes, bob, 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 if you poke him. Okay, well, there we go. There's a thing. Okay, a little alien friend. Um, we need we need some soup, please. What can we break down to make chemicals again? Uh, let's break down... Um, that makes that... I don't want to break down the duct tape. The gun would... We got it for free, and it will keep us alive. Let's break the gun apart. We might have to break the gun apart. Okay, never mind. Oh, we haven't got any of these things. <laughs> I broke apart the artifact to do something else. Why is it taunting me like this? Mom, I'm detecting an unusual disturbance in a mini reactor. You see the membrane of light. Space time itself tearing open. Figures are moving and speaking on the other side. Don't through exchange exotic matter or risk. What do we do? Offer something or attempt to communicate. No, let's just pretend it's not happening and hide. Hide behind one of those chairs, please. Absolutely cower in fear. We've got nothing else to do. Day 31 is round the corner. Oh dear, I think we got hurt. We ignored the space-time tear in our mini-reactor, but it quickly destabilised. It slowly grew before bal suddenly ballooning. It washed over you before dissipating. You were left with a dull ache, as if some part of you was now missing. But at least the mini-reactor is now operating optimally. You're in peak physical condition, Captain. I don't look it. You're... <laughs> You're in peak physical condition, Captain. You are badly hurt, Mom. Make your mind up, computer. I'm vigorously hungry and hurt. Okay, fine. Right, uh, craft soup. Yes, make soup great again. Computer. Long-term space travel presents many risks to one's physical well-being, from muscular atrophy to laziness to diets notoriously high in sodium because of all the soup. I'm concerned about the decline I've seen in your physical fitness since our little sojourn began. Uh, sojourn, so, sojourn, sojourn. 
I don't know how you pronounce that word properly. Whatever. Trip. Uh, I recommend a daily regimen of movements that you use only, uh, only your own body weight. You don't need any equipment for those, just gravity or artificial gravity. Would you like to do a workout? Well, if you tell me to, then yes, I'd be delighted to, I suppose. So craft soup, workout, nothing else to be done. Okay, let's see what happens now. Uh, this is going on for far longer than I thought it was going to. This is going on for way longer than I thought. Day 32. Oh dear, I'm starving. Captain, your form was abysmal. Push-ups and planks don't require that much strength. At least it's the bare minimum required to be a model Astro citizen. You felt hungry after that workout. Oh, brilliant. But no calorific rewards could be given. Those are for the strong people. So I've got soup. I'm starving. Uh, I'll give myself some of that. Oh, my goodness. I'm starving. Or I could give an alien some soup, essentially. Mama sound came from nearby. It appears to be a cockroach the size of a school bus. Scratch that. It's a dead cockroach. A figure is sitting on top of it, out of breath, with a spear in hand. It's seen us. It's approaching. The masked alien is rubbing its stomach and gesturing our way. I think it wants food. Do you want to offer it some? I'll see if I can translate its mumblings. I don't think I can spare the food. I don't think I can spare the food, because she's starving. So by the time I've then recycled something and crafted something, it's going to be day 35, and she will have died of starvation. So, alas... I can do no such thing, my alien friend. Uh, but I am going to eat the tin of soup that we've got to make sure that I don't die myself. The strange little cockroach killer walked away mumbling when you declined to provide any food. After it left, I managed to translate from what it said to us. I'm a rad roach hunter, as in, I'm a radical guy who hunts roaches. Do you have any food? After you said no, it wandered away muttering, you guys aren't rad. You guys aren't rad at all. <laughs> no, I am not. I'm also very hungry. You should eat something, Captain. Hurt and hungry with a little alien lying on the floor that I don't know what I'm supposed to do with. Can't craft soup. Okay, we need to recycle something. What do we want to recycle now? Um, oh, possibly the lighter. Recycle the lighter. Turn that into soup. It's now just a, a survival mission, isn't it? Oh, Captain, there's something we need. Captain, can you eat? Captain, arg. You say arg in these situations, right? I hate raising my volume, but that malfunctioning body odor removal filter is making a racket. I think it's malfunctioning. The last, I mean, last time I used two, uh, a tin of soup. Let's use tape this time. Good old tape. Yes, please. We'll use some tape to mend the filter. Okay. Right. Are we going to starve to death? I mean, I don't know where the end is going to come. We can't go out. We can't go out exploring because we've only got one. We've only got us. She looks delighted. You fix the body odor removal filter by replacing the worn out screws with tape. The cabin no longer smells of unwashed astronauts. You are able to think much clearer about that constant din, drowning out every thought. You're still injured. I am now alert. Okay, so I'm caffeinated, vigorous, hurt, hungry, and alert. <laughs> My goodness. Right. Make soup, please. Thank you very much deal with the issue on the computer the little alien we collected from the planet's ruined planes appears to be very very unwell you could treat the lost alien a few ways how do you want to help it captain give it a new mask use a med kit or use some tape hooray for the tape <laughs> tape can fix everything let's just use more tape more tape on all things right alien are you still alive oh it's taking a while to load day 35 that was a bit worrying oh he sat up hello Oh no, but my tape's gone. I've ran out. After studying the little weak alien a bit more, you decided to help it out. You grabbed the duct tape roller and went to work on the tear in its protective suit. The creature studied the shining, wondrous material on its arm. It looked at you in awe. If only Astro Citizen HQ could know how effectively you were spreading awareness of the human power and advancement across the galaxy, ma'am. You really should do something about your wounds, ma'am. I can't. Crafting completed. New item available. Soup. Okay. I've got soup. I can eat the soup. I want to craft a med kit. I need 10 sciency points for that. So I need to recycle something else. Um, let's recycle. Oh, well, the duct tape's gone. The duct tape is, is, is broken now. Yes, it's damaged. So I can recycle it. I don't, I, I can't repair it. I need food and I need medical stuff. So uh, yeah, do that to get the sciency points and then make a decision on the computer. Looks like we have a leak, Captain. Well, of course we do. Everything else is falling apart. The sprinkler system went haywire and now everything is getting wet. You need to do something before our supplies get soaked. Act fast. There's no time to waste. You need to cut off the piping with the main valve or temporarily disable the sprinkler system. 
Um, use intelligence, please. Try and use intelligence. And have some soup. Try and stave off your hunger a little tiny bit. Day 36. The flood yesterday was about to turn the shuttle into a space hot tub before you figured out how to stop it. Everything is wet. You're wet. The supplies are wet. Even I am wet. Most annoying, Captain. The ship smells like wet dog now, or at least that's what I'm deducing from your face. I'm sure this will be a lovely space trip story in a few weeks' time, but right now I don't envy you. So we've got ourselves 10 sort of minerals, whatever it is. I'm hurt and hungry. So now I have to craft one of these. Do I craft the first aid kit, which takes three days? Or do I craft the soup, which takes one day, but then I'm going to be hurt still? I think I might need to do the soup. If I eat another tin of soup and then go for the health kit thing, see if that helps. Oh, and I've got nothing to offer whoever this person might be. A sweet old man looking like Charles Darwin is <laughs> knocking at our airlock politely. Charles Darwin. You let him in, he shakes your hand, then holds it in an iron grip and won't let go. With technology, evolution stops. Soviet scientists want our species to stay strong, so they created me, the natural selection bot. He claims it is for your own good, which is what the dentist always said. You didn't believe him either. You've left me in despite the warning signs. Now face your space predator, human. He does have a point, Captain. Oh, I can see why you'd want to postpone the discussion. Defend yourself. I have got nothing to defend myself with. I have got no armor. I've not got a gun because I recycled it and turned it into some soup. I don't have a shovel to bash you about the head with. I can't do anything. Am I going to get killed by Soviets on day 37? That's unfortunate. Little stubby alien guy, come and help me. Help me, please. Um, so I'm making soup. Uh, that That's all I can do. That's all I can do. Don't let me get executed by a Soviet robot, please. Come on, day 37. I'm sure it'll all be fine. I think everything will be fine on day 37. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Beautiful. A Darwinian predator droid held you in its grip. You cursed the weakness of your human body out loud as you tried to wrestle free. The droid froze, offended. The human body is not weak. It is a wonder of evolution. In a zealous rage, the droid preached about evolution. He edged it closer to the airlock, then pushed it out mid-lecture. You're safe, but the droid's verdict inspired dark thoughts in your head. Are you fit for survival, or are you the weak link? You are still alert. Crafting completed. New item available. Soup. Okay, we've got some more soup. Are we still hurt? Yes, we are. We need to recycle something else now to turn it into the chemically stuff. Oh, the handbook. I need to make a first aid kit and I'm going to get rid of the handbook. Can you hear my teeth chattering, Captain? Of course you can't because I'm a computer and I have no teeth. Duh. Still, I regret to inform you that the heat module is stuck in a cooling feedback loop so it's going to get cold soon. My vacuum tubes will be fine but you should protect yourself or you'll freeze, Captain. Oh dear. I don't have any armour, and my lighter went with Tom. I've got a sock puppet. I mean, I could put socks on my hands and keep myself warm that way, <laughs> possibly. Um, I have some soup. Oh, dear. Uh, and I'm recycling our guidebook. Oh, this I'm not going to be able to get out of this, am I? But I am on, like, day 38 or whatever it is. That's pretty good going. What am I on? Day 30. 30 high 30s. Yeah, day 38. Uh, okay, I still seem to be alive. It was freezing cold, but that sock did the trick. <laughs> really? It's like the heat module reset just in time. I could tell you were getting tired switching that sock between your feet. I'm in alert. I'm in great health. I should do something about my wounds. It doesn't make any sense. I'm no longer hungry, though. That's a good sign. Craft a med kit. Yes, please. Craft one of those. Warning, warning, we have a breach. The ship is about to be contaminated. I'm engaging all the emergency protocols available. My efforts appear to be useless. This contamination cannot be avoided. You have to protect yourself, Captain, before it's too late. I cannot protect myself. I've got no means of protecting myself. I'm all on my own. I'm making a med kit. I've got no food. I've got a little stubby alien in the corner who doesn't seem to be of any value at all. Don't really know what he's doing there. Come on, let now our goal can be day 40. Can we get to day 40 and survive there? Oh, no, I don't look very well. <laughs> I don't look very well at all. Haven't you heard, Captain? The ship got contaminated. Yes, indeed, I'm aware of that. So please explain to me in a way that a humble AI like myself could understand. Why would you not protect yourself? I couldn't. The fever, the coughing, and all other symptoms I can confidently identify as icky are the result of this unfortunate crisis. The good news is they should be over soon. You should take care of your injuries. You no longer feel vigorous. I am weak. I am ill. I am starving. <laughs> oh dear. I'm hurt, weak, sick and hungry. Oh good. 
But I'm making a med kit in two days. Will I be alive in two days? I don't know. An alien vessel is approaching. Their ship is rigged with a light show synced to the music they started blasting as soon as we open comms. Captain, they're playing rockabilly. The aliens claim to be of the Dance Lord tribe and are searching for the best dancers in the galaxy. They've challenged our tribe to a dance-off, specifically a sock cop. If you don't accept, they will vaporise us with their ultra-high frequency speakers. How will you defeat the Dance Lords? With agility, but I'm a bit poorly, so I don't know if I'm going to be any good at this or not. Uh, I've got no food. I've got, I've got, I've got nothing. <laughs> will I even be alive on day 40 to see the dance troupe and their amazing dance skills? Let's find out. Day 40 rolls round and are we alive? No! <laughs> we got to day 40, but we are indeed dead. In hindsight, should I have crafted the med kit? earlier but then i didn't know i was going to get that disease thing that then came in through this ship oh botherations we did quite well um, let's see what happened then you accepted the dance floor's challenge they beamed you to their ship and you lit up the dance floor as soon as you stepped on board after taking your shoes off you sock hop straight their leader war bop <laughs> beautiful what a great name but he was no match for your wicked footwork and incessant snapping Warbop acknowledged your skills and let you go with his blessing. He even refilled our supply of chemicals. The sock hop ended with everyone sipping non-alcoholic fruit punch from a big glass bowl. Captain, I think you've been practicing your moves in the mirror. Plus 20 crafting points. 20 chemicals as well, which would have been for food and and a med kit. You should rest, Mom. You'll still be sick. You should do something about your wounds. Alas. Tis all over. And I died. At least I died on a planet. Tom died out there. I died out there. One expedition successful. One failed. Oh dear. So 18 soup consumed. <laughs> oh dearie me. Okay, never mind. Day 40 though. That That's okay. I can be quite proud of the day 40 achievement there. Well, that indeed was a tale of two very different uh, 60 parsecs experiences. The first one did not go very well at all. The second one went really quite well until the end. I think losing Tom didn't help. I don't think losing Tom helped on uh, his second little sort of trip out onto the planet because then he wasn't around to join in and do stuff and you know take part in all those decisions and what have you. So um, yeah, never mind. But yeah, we did quite well. Day 40 is okay. And I do like this game. I like, I mean, 60 seconds was very good. This is very good in a sort of, it, it's the same sort of vein. There's a little bit more to it, I think, in this one than there is to uh, 60 seconds. Because I guess I've had quite a bit of time to uh, you know develop it and put new shiny things in. But yeah, it's very good. I like the visuals. I like the, uh, I like the situation you get in, the writing, the tongue-in-cheek sort of humour about the whole thing. You know, it takes a poke at the sort of uh, the sci-fi sort of genre and stuff. It's very, very good. But you know what? I think we're done for now. We are done for now. You get the idea. This video has gone on for probably quite a long time. It might be one of the longer videos we've got on the channel that isn't one of the live streams. So um, yeah, we'll we'll uh, wrap it up for now. But yeah, 60 parsecs is, it's a lot of fun. It's very, very good. And I, uh, I recommend it. Links to the uh, Steam store page are in the video description if you are interested. It's out now and all that. Go and grab it. But for now, we are done. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and also please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the nonsensey stuff that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. They've ripped my arms off, ripped my legs off. I mean, you know, unfortunately they didn't rip anything else off. Yes, I'm off my face on mushrooms. Why, Lady Charlotte, I, uh, I would certainly love to taste your cake. The King of the West is an idiot. I am off my face on mushrooms. I mean, asking me questions isn't going to be my strong point at the minute.